clean up my room for you guys. Cause that's the kind of person I am. So. A really common question I get is why I choose an island school over a state school. I got together with a friend who goes to SGU in Grenada and we did a little Skype call talking about your most popular concerns. Lucky you. Also, I just said we did a Skype call, so sometimes Wi-Fi sucks. So if the video gets a little spotty, just bear with us. And if something doesn't make sense, always feel free to shoot me a message. I know this video is super long and I never post long videos. Down in my bio, I have a bunch of time cards laid out so you can just click exactly what you wanna hear us talk about and it'll take you right to it. Now, I wanna tell you guys a little bit about Brittany before we get started. Brittany is also a YouTuber and she makes videos about her time at SGU. So, if you're interested in that, I'm gonna leave her YouTube right here and her Instagram down here. Hey, so my name is Brittany Kilgore. Um, I have a YouTube too. I'm a term three student at SGU St. George's University. It's like my first semester of my second year for anyone back in the States. 22, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And yeah. <laughs> first of all, I just want to start off with saying both Ross and SGU are awesome schools. They're accredited. You're going to get a great education. You're going to become a great doctor going there. They're like both AV and May accredited. Like you take your NAVLE, everything, and as long as you pass your license exams, you're good to go. For me personally, how I chose SGU or even first applied to the island schools, I didn't know. Like it was always something like you heard about the island schools, but you didn't really know anyone who'd ever been there. Like all the vets I've worked under, like when they came through, like the island school was not what you wanted to do. But when I was at a clinic where I was working, one of the girls who came in with her cat, she was like, yeah, I'm a third year vet student. And I was like, oh, where? And me being from Georgia, I expect UGA. She was like, oh, St. George's, it's in um, the Caribbean. And I was just like, oh, okay. And she was like, yeah, you should really look into it if you're getting ready to apply. Cause I was getting ready to apply. I looked it up and I was like, wow, like game changer. And I was like, maybe I should apply here. And so when I started looking more and more into SGU, I also came across Ross and I looked deep into Ross and I applied to both of them with my Vimcast and they were actually the only two schools I got into because yeah. like some people in my grades suck. <laughs> so, um, but like, that's the thing I tell people, like, don't like look at SU and Ross as like a backup school. It is actually becoming more common because like just with our like generation, everyone wants to travel and be right. somewhere cool. That's how I ended up here. And then I went to tour boats and I loved it. I mean, my parents weren't on board at first. They were just like, why you don't, are you sure you just don't want to wait another year, maybe pull your grades up. But I think it's the best decision I've ever made. Ever since I was probably in eighth grade, I'd always said I wanted to leave the country for grad school. It's something I've always wanted to experience. Personally, I didn't even know SGU was a school in the island. I'd only heard about Ross. I met two Rossies that were doing the rotations after they had graduated at a veterinary hospital that I was working with. And the other veterinarians at the hospital that were much older than them, they came to me, they pulled me aside, and they were like, Ross makes good doctors. Ross had a bad rep for many years because it used to be people's safety school, but Ross has come a long way, SGU's come a long way. Consider these island schools because they're gonna make you a really good doctor. I'm happy with the decision I made. I am too. I know everyone's gonna say that about their alma mater, like, but yeah. like, <laughs> I love SGU's. One of the biggest things people ask us is how can you afford to go there? And honestly, it boils down to if you did not get into your in-state school, you're going to be paying a lot of money wherever you go. So if that's the only thing holding you back from leaving the country, then stop. Go for it. Take that jump. I tell everyone, like, the majority of people's families aren't rich and aren't just paying their way through school. There are some people, but it's not the majority. Most people are living off of their loans, and it's not only the tuition. People are taking out loans for their cars, for their apartments, for even the flights to the islands, um, and even in the States. People live off their loans. So, like, like you said, don't let money be the decision that makes you not go out of the country. Because at the end of the day, whether you're in St. Kitts at Ross, in Grenada, SGU, or even in Australia or the UK, like you're going to be in debt. If this is your passion, that debt is worth it. If you're going into grad school, gra honestly, grad school anywhere, veterinary, med school, anything. And if you're saying to yourself, I'm going to find a way to save money, then you need to slow down because that's not just going to happen. At the end of the day, you're going to go into debt, but you're following your dreams. You're going towards your passion. Things are going to work out. As long as you become a good doctor, you're passionate about what you're doing, you're going to be okay when you graduate. Think Things are going to be okay. Follow the path you need to follow and move forward. There's a lot of opportunities I know with clubs that I would have never gotten the opportunity to experience 
if I didn't leave the country. I know SGU, you have that club with the sea turtles that you guys work with. Sea turtles, like their nesting period is like the spring. So usually they come onto the island late February all the way into like early June. Ocean spirits, they basically like, you go out, I mean, from like, I think you drive up at like 7 p.m. You stay out there till like 4 a.m. on the beach, literally just counting any turtles that come up, tagging them, counting the eggs, making sure the nests don't look like nests and things like that. Um, and that's something that most people want to do at least once while they're there. And it's not only even the vet school, it's the whole community that's in it. We have like a bat research program. That's how they advertise it. They're like, do you want to hold a bat? You should help out with this research program. <laughs> yeah, there's zoos back home. But like, even if you're working at a zoo, like how much are you just going to get to do? I know at Ross, when I first got there, they do a sea turtle release. And when I was there, they were doing a rehabilitation and there was a sea turtle that only had three legs and they were making sure, can the sea turtle swim? Can it survive? Will it make it out in the wild? And it was the coolest thing. Like, Aww. I don't know else I would have been able to do that, you know? We have an outreach program where we go out into the community we educate the community, you know, we change the dynamic between this is a wild animal and this is a pet. We provide free care, vaccines, things like that. I know that SGU does something like that too. That's awesome because we're not just learning, okay, this is medical care, but also we're learning that people person aspect. We know how to work with people that maybe don't have the best income compared to other people who have high incomes. And we're working around how to provide good healthcare with what's available to us, which is another awesome opportunity. On the island, like you're gonna be like, you're immersed into a culture that's not your own. You're immersed into a culture that is not a first world. Um, and I know people try to get you sensitive and say, don't say first world, don't say third world. But at the end of the day, like these small Caribbean countries are still third world countries. If you're thinking about going out of the country, you need to be prepared that you're not going to be with what you know. And I feel like it helps prepare you. Like you say, it gives you all of these clubs and opportunities that you wouldn't get, but then you also have to take the bad that you wouldn't get either. And it makes you a better person. The experiences that you get leaving the country and going to an island school, besides the education, goes way beyond the classroom. I'd never be able to live in another country for two years and get to just immerse myself in this whole opportunity and culture. And I totally agree because it's just certain things that you're just going to be introduced to that you're not. For me, one thing was like having to rely on the bus and it was the SGU bus. I mean, it's the school bus, UGA had buses, but that was my only source of transportation. I couldn't go home to my apartment and get in my car. And students do get cars, but my first two and a half semesters, I didn't have a car. So like to me, relying on public transportation was a change, walking all the time. Cause even though my bus got me close to my house, there was still like an additional 10 minute walk up the hill in 90 degree weather <laughs> with right. books and groceries like that I wasn't used to. It's not like here in the States where Wendy's closes at 10. So if you pull up at 9.59, technically they still serve you. Like right. 10 o'clock, they're walking out the door. Sometimes like convenience, the country shuts down on Sunday because it's, it's Catholic. So like most places are closed. So things like that, that you don't, you take for granted in the States, it's kind of humbling coming back when you realize like you don't need all the things you think you need. And like you said, it, it goes in and out of the classroom. It comes back to like, even like when I come home to work, over the breaks like I'm just like oh we're over complicating things that could be so simple because right. there you learn to be simple and I'm grateful for it simplified <laughs> lifestyle it's a positive and happier lifestyle <laughs> there's a lot of fun things to do because you think about it like these islands are vacation hotspots so anywhere you want to go anything you want to do you're basically like you're on vacation you can go and hang out at some five-star hotels get some poolside drinks go to the beach hiking bars clubs there's catamaran trips where you can hop off the boat and go snorkeling and see shipwrecks go to neighboring islands like nevis really good food especially street food we've got atv tours um parasailing jet skiing and then you can even hang out by port where all the cruise ships come in there's a lot of fun things to do over there you think of the beaches and everything like that that you can go to like anytime you want you can go hiking you can jump off waterfalls like i have the scuba diving certification even if you don't want to get full scuba diving certification like you said the snorkeling like i feel like it's constant things you can go to the resorts you can go into town like there's things that you can do that like most people only do on vacation and like for me i never get tired of the beach it'll be going into my third year being on the island next year i'm still never tired of it so i feel like there's always like so much to do so much to see even just like the silly thing that you're not even used to seeing like a mongoose when i first saw one i was like oh that's a cute looking ferret thing that runs in my driveway all the time and 
you know, I see these gigantic cane toads that apparently are poisonous if you threaten them and they secrete the stuff off their skin. The centipedes, like. Right. Yeah, the centipedes, the centipedes, <laughs> they make you a new person. <laughs> they keep on your toes. Those centipedes, you do definitely, definitely do not want to be bit by a centipede. It's all part of that island life. You might have your roommates. But one of your guaranteed roommates is always going to be a gecko. You know those, like, air things that people use? Plastic that you put on the bottom of your door so the air doesn't go out? Yeah, those, the little stuff. Yeah. I brought them down with me, and it's been the best way to keep out, like, roaches and lizards and centipedes. Mm-hmm. Definitely consider if your door is, like, not level. <laughs> I know that with Ross, we get these kennel dogs that they work for two years. So your first semester, you're required to walk them. And then in your upper semesters, you get the opportunity to do spays or neuters. And then beyond that, upper semesters also get the opportunity to perform surgeries on donkeys, sheep, and goats, which are things that other schools really don't get the chance to do. It's cool because that's your surgery, and then that's your patient for the rest of the semester. You're responsible for checking up on them, making sure they're stable. SU doesn't really have that. I mean, they guarantee the spay and neuter, just like any other school. Um, you do get to do like clinical rotate, small mini rotations. We call it like mini clinical rotations because we're not at our clinical school, but they do it at the small animal clinic there and at our large animal teaching facility. But then we also have like ambulatory services where you get to go out into the community, um, you know, castrate pigs, you know, check on the horses, check on these dairy cows or beef cattle that people have. So, I mean, yeah, some people might think like, oh, but you do that at your clinical school anyways but it's different again on the island kind of like you said back to going like with the outreach clinics like just the way that animals are up to kept there they just don't have the resources and the knowledge and everything so like more than likely you're not going to the random farm in Georgia where all the cows are super healthy and you're just right, you know exactly. expecting it for, like you're going and there's like genuine problems canine distemper or things like that like you're not you're probably never going to see that in the states like you'll only see it if you go out to another country that doesn't have quality vet care and it's things like that that you see regularly in Grenada and in these island schools because it's just it's not like health vet health care is not like as stressed that is it as it is here so I feel like even if it's not necessarily surgery you get to see a lot of cases and do a lot more like surgery and sick and ill cases than you might in the states it's it was pretty cool like with that with like the club opportunities I joined the DI club and we got to go out to a slaughterhouse, which, I mean, it stinks that it was a slaughterhouse, but we went and we did ultrasounds with this mobile ultrasound machine on uh, goats. And we got to see, is this goat pregnant? I'm out in the field in a place where these goats aren't really at the vet school. And I'm going one by one, each goat, is this goat pregnant? No. Okay, it goes over here. Is this goat pregnant? No. Okay, it goes over here. So it was a really cool opportunity. And we even got to find the first pregnant goat of the season. That's stuff that you just don't get to really do. Especially in your lower terms, too. That is one thing about Ross and SGU. They pride themselves on giving you hands-on experience from, like, the day you walk in the door. Being away from home, being away from friends you know, Amazon, stuff like that. And I tell people, um, I've always wanted to move away from home, whether it was out of the country or out of the state. And I went, I was born and raised in Atlanta. I went to UGA. And after UGA, I could have applied to their vet school. And I was like, I am tired of Georgia. I want to go somewhere else. So for me, it was never an issue. I mean, yeah, it was a huge change. It was a huge jump. Um, my dream has always been California, and this is way further than California. But there's people who come down there and they love it, but they still have like mid semester breakdowns. They want to go home. There's people that say they can't go a whole semester and they find a weekend to go home because like our lectures are recorded. But for me, I don't think I've ever cried or just been stressed out from not being home. Mm-hmm. I feel like it depends on the person. And even if you are close to your family, I don't think that's a reason that you should not go. I'm mm-hmm. close to my family. I talk to my mom and dad, I swear, every day. You find new ways to have fun. Like, you'll make the best, and everybody here is away from home. So you find a new family of people who are also going through the same thing down there. The way that I think about it is every experience that I get in St. Kitts is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And mm-hmm. I want to do as much as I can, because when am I ever going to live there again? I know people that are homebodies, and they FaceTime their mom and dad every day. They FaceTime their grandparents. I know people that were FaceTiming their parents over Thanksgiving. So... People make things work. It's yeah. how badly do you want it? If you enter an education system outside of the country and you've got this bad attitude, I miss home, I miss the convenience of this and that, it's honestly going to mess with your education. I have a friend that really struggled 
maintaining good grades and actually ended up failing out because her whole attitude was, I hate it here. I want to go home. So the attitude that you bring into your education is going to reflect what you take out of it. I spoke with a friend who had just transferred from Ross and went over to a state school. And I asked her, like, what was her takeaways? What did she find positive about um, an island school? And then what did she find negative about an island school that she found in state? So we kind of get like that unbiased opinion because she's experienced both things. What she really liked about island schools is that it really felt like more of a community because mm -hmm. of like state schools. You've got like the undergrad program, the grad program, the people that already live there. So everything felt like people just kind of like fell into their cliques. Whereas with like an island school, mm. everyone is going to an island. Most people are not from there. So it's all new faces. You all have each other. So even at SGU, even though it's a larger campus, you guys still have each other. You still have that strong community feeling. My class, for example, has one Grenadian girl in there. So almost everyone there is outside of their comfort zone. Everyone there is looking for friends and right. looking for, you know, somebody I need this community feeling. In-state, her testing is a lot different than how it was at Ross. Right now, for my lower semester exams, it's mostly just multiple choice and true or false. I don't know if it's like that for you at SGU. Yeah, it's mostly okay. MC. And when Ross gets to our upper semesters, then it's more open-ended and we have to elaborate short answer. But she told me already right now, even though she's in the same semester technically as me, most of her exams are all short answer or essay. And they expect more. They want you to be proficient in your explanations on what you do and don't know. However, since stuff is a lot harder and they expect more out of you, their fail is a 60%. Whereas with Ross, since you have that, you got to know it, multiple choice, they don't, they're not as lenient with their fail. So our fail is 70%. So harder, but they're still making like fair accommodations, I feel like. It's just like one of those, like it, it gives and takes. In right, some way, right, exactly. So. She was telling me for her hands on experiences, she does get to work on a lot more animals than I do. But I think that all comes down to she's got a much larger campus. They've got a whole veterinary hospital right on site, whereas I'm on an island. I've kind of got limited opportunities, even though I'm getting a lot of hands-on opportunities because I went out and I looked for those opportunities thanks to my clubs. She gets a little bit more. For example, she gets to work with animals in the hospital. She got to practice ultrasound techniques at least twice a month as a part of like her anatomy course, they were also able to bring in like specialty veterinarians. So when they were learning about like injections for a large animal, a specialist on equine joints came in and was like, okay, this is how this is, this works. So I think mm -hmm. it's all comes down to you're in a big university. Of course, you're going to have more opportunities available to us. Whereas at a smaller place on an island, the veterinarians and the opportunities available to you, they're giving you the best that they can. And honestly, it, it's still good either way. Exactly. Like some people who've asked me just even just reaching out to me about SGU, they're like, well, is there like a teaching herd? And how many animals is it? And I'm just like, I can count. And like, we have a beef cattle herd. And our professors say, we're teaching you dairy and beef on these beef cattle. Or like, we don't have, like, I know y'all have a sheep flock. We don't have a goat and sheep flock. So all oh, of our wow. goat and sheep experience comes out from the island. We have like nine horses and two donkeys and that's what you get all of your experience on. So it's things like that, that it's like, oh, you might be able to do it in your lower years in the state school, but we can't. They still prepare you to mm -hmm. get to your clinicals. Like it's never an issue when like the SU or Ross people get to the clinicals part. Like I even have friends who are in the States and they say they worked alongside, they call them the island students. And they say they keep right up. So it's, even though we may not have all the resources, we're still adequately prepared. We're still mm -hmm. learning the same things. We're just getting it presented to us in different ways. Either way, they're accredited for a reason, you know? Right. They have to mm -hmm. teach us things. So we're going to get taught them either way. So if you go and you're trying to compare and contrast little things, you're going to find differences. But you will get the education you need. It's just what you make of your experiences. Ross is on an island. It's a tinier university, so it doesn't have... Many things available to students in the States, like specialized veterinarians and large animal facilities. You know, I got to perform an ultrasound, but it's because I joined DI club. And I got to perform a necropsy on an animal, but it's because I joined another club. So you have to look for those opportunities. But when you're a veterinarian, you're, you're going to have to look to get to where you need to go either way. So things aren't being 
thrown at me, but I'm making it work. I feel like this goes for even if you're comparing two state schools or an out of state or out of country versus state school, you can't just compare them off of what they offer because everywhere is different. And at the end of the day, most of us, when we graduate, aren't just going to be ready to just go out in the world and not need help. I mean, that's no matter where you go, like you learn so much. They teach us all these little things and it makes you like, even now I just think like, how would I ever remember that? So when you graduate, you're not going to be ready. You're licensed to do whatever, but most people still go work under somebody. And so I tell people like, don't base that off of like what you're going to know. You're still going to learn. That's like even in medical school and law school, when you come out, you don't just go out in the world. You still yeah. learn. You're still learning after you graduate. People say St. George's doesn't have a CT machine. So how do y'all learn? Like you're like advanced imaging. And I tell them like, you get to do it in your clinical year. And some people are like, but how will you be prepared for your clinical year? And I try to explain to people like, you might see that CT scan at LSU once before your clinical year. So how much more do you really know out before that? It's accredited. So you learn what you need. It's just in a different right. location, the different teaching right. style. Island schools, Ross, SU, they make good doctors. During my orientation, they had told us a story about how one of our graduates was in the middle of a surgery when the power went out and the lights went out and there was an animal open on the table and everyone around her was really panicked and she said, give me a flashlight and she continued with the surgery. You're not just going to leave this animal open on the table. And that's one of the awesome things about island schools is it's preparing us when we have all these resources and then when we don't have all these resources. So we're getting the best of both worlds to really become a really well-rounded doctor. I know a story. This isn't even a story. This is an experience that happened this semester before we came home. The building that has our junior surgery lab, air condition broke in that building this semester on a Thursday, and they weren't having anyone come fix it till Sunday. People had surgery in a full gown <laughs> in that hot area in the junior yeah. surgery lab. And because it's a sterile environment, you can't have the door wide open. Right. So they brought fans in and so the first day when it first went out there was an actual surgery going on but like you said this animal's open on the table you can't just say oh we'll open it back up start again when the air comes back on they had to finish it in the hot sweating right. and keep going now for the next day they rescheduled that surgery but like you said when something goes wrong mm -hmm. what can you do and it's things like that like in the states i mean yeah your air can go out but it's different if it's 60 degrees outside and your air heat goes out versus if it's 90 degrees it's going to get hot super quick. You just learn to laugh about it, and it yeah. just makes the difference. It's really just a humbling opportunity, and I'm grateful for it. Mm -hmm. I am, too. So grateful. <laughs>